Hey, do you know how to divide fractions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure we do. What do you do? Flip the first one, second one, or both? Second. Second. We just work on that stuff, right? So we get four ninths. Instead of seven over one, how much do we get? One over seven. And we're going to multiply. If we multiply, I know that we extend our line or you rewrite the fraction. Four times one, nine times seven. Does anything simplify in this case? No. no. Cool, all right. Then I know we're going to get four over how much? Hey, well, now wait a second. Now that's a fraction. Do I have to write that back as a mixed number? No. No. Well, there's no way to. I mean, that's a fraction that has a numerator less than the denominator. So that is that is your answer. There's yeah, nothing else reduce. you can do with that. You, if you could simplify, you would do it now. Yeah. But there's, there's nothing to simplify. Let's try one more example together. I will give you three on your own. They go very fast. And then we'll cover those in class and meet up for a day. Sound like a plan? Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Okay, 8 fifteenths divided by 3 and 4 fifths. Why don't you tell me the first thing that you got to do? Make it a proper fraction. Definitely. Now, this one's already a fraction like we like to see it. 8 fifteenths. And we're going to divide still by, what's this fraction become? 19 over 5. said 19 over 5, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're multiplying 3 times 5, that's 15. We're adding the 4, that's 19. We keep the denominator, that's over 5. What's well, going the next step? What's the First one, second one, or both? Second. Yeah, as soon as we do this, this is old stuff. We, we've already done that before in this class. We'll have 8 fifteenths times 15, uh, sorry, 5 over 19. We just reciprocate the second fraction, then we multiply instead of divide. Extend our line. Five and fifteen. Yeah, the five and the fifteen, those are going to simplify. The nineteen, no, it's a prime number. But five and fifteen, those have a common factor of five. You get one and three. Our answer is going to be eight. Fifty-seven. Eight fifty-sevens. Did you get eight fifty-sevens if you did that on your own? Yeah. Good deal. Let's try a couple on your own. I would like you to do this one. And when you're done with that one, try a division. Now, I can only give you about a minute because I want to go over these in class as well. So let's work on these things. Okay, we've got to get going on this. Hopefully the first thing you did in every case is change a mixed number into an improper fraction. It's the only way you can deal with these problems. So here we would get 5 thirds times 9 fourths. Were you successful on doing that? Yes. Yeah, were you? Yes, no? Okay. We extend our line because we're multiplying. We simplify the 3 with the 9. You get 15 over 4, yeah. or in other words, you're going to get a 3 and 3 fourths. Raise your hand if you have 15 over 4 and then 3 and 3 fourths. Very good, very good. Now, next one, of course, we are going to do 23 over 7. 
Divided by, oh, what's that give you? 31. Next thing you're going to do? So times 14 over 31. Seven. Now we're back to a multiplication problem. Again, you cannot simplify until you get down to this, this step, which is why we extend our line, put our dot and our dot. Now we can simplify those sevens, and you get... 46 over 31. You gotta change it back to a mixed number. That's 1 and. Yeah. 1 and 15 over 31 is our final answer on that. Would you raise your hand and feel okay with multiplying and dividing these mixed numbers? Good. Okay, so last time we really mastered how to multiply and divide some mixed number fractions. And what we realized was that as long as we change these things to improper first, the same principles really apply. And when we multiplied, we just did improper fractions, multiplied straight across, and simplified as we went, just like we did with regular fractions. Same thing with division, except that we reciprocated that second fraction after we changed it to an improper. Now, when we deal with addition subtraction, there was one thing about addition subtraction that you really didn't have with multiplication and division. What do you need when you add and subtract fractions that you don't need when you multiply and divide them? LCD. Definitely. Now, before you go and find an LCD, what we're going to do in this section, I, I was mentioning this just a little while ago, your book has a couple different ways to do this. If you, you like the book way, that's fine. I'm going to be showing you a different way in this class. The reason why is because using improper, using mixed number fractions is quite difficult when you need to borrow and carry with those fractions. Most people, when they're taking this class, do not get that right. Uh, so what I'm going to do is eliminate that whole need. Are you ready for that? It's a, it's a lot better. It, you're going to deal with bigger numbers. I'll warn you on that. That's why I said you may use a calculator for this one section. You're going to deal with bigger numbers. However, you'll get the right answer all the time because I'm not changing anything that you know. So here's the idea. Just like multiplication division, addition subtraction, we're going to do one thing before we start adding or subtracting these fractions. We're going to change any mixed numbers into improper. We're going to stick with the same exact method we've been doing that we don't have to learn anything new, just the old things we can rely on. You, you, you with me on that? So first thing, whenever you see improper in this class, I'm sorry, mixed number. Whenever you see the mixed number in this class, we're going to change it right to improper. So change to improper first, and then we're going to add and subtract as usual. Change to improper fractions. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Change those to improper fractions for me. Also, on your sign-in sheet today, uh, I don't have a room for you over here, so right next to your name, put your initials right to the left of your name, that column over there, okay? Right next to your name. So you've got to be pretty good at changing these things into improper fractions. Can you tell me on the first fraction, how much do we get for improper here? Seven. Perfect. Oops, that's not right. Plus, how much over here? 43. So, we got 7 thirds plus 43 over 8. What's the next thing? Make it a good on the LCD. Sure. We can't just add them like that without changing them away. You can. I, I was just mentioning this. If you weren't listening, uh, you have two options here. One, the book tells you, is you can add them just like they are. However, when you get to carrying and borrowing fra with fractions, it is very difficult. And most people, 95% of the people, do not get it right. Uh, what I'm giving you is an option here, how to get the right answer all the time. And I was just mentioning this, that you will deal with larger numbers. Your numerators will be larger than they would otherwise. However, you will always get the right answer, and if you have a calculator, it eliminates the necessity to deal with large numbers uh, problematically anyway. So we can deal with these numbers very well if you use this method. Are you all with me on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we still have to find the LCD. What is your LCD here? 24. 24. Perfect. We're going to do exactly the same thing that we just finished doing with adding and subtracting. No big deal. The only big deal here is the big numbers you're going to have on the top, top of your fraction. That's it. So here, what do you need to multiply the right fraction by? Three. And the left fraction? Eight. 
we're going to get 56 over 24 plus, how much is that? Remember, what was it? 109. 109, okay. Are you sure? No, it's not. Over 24. 129. 129. Remember, you can use a calculator for this section. That's fine. That's fine. On your test, I'm not going to give you numbers that come out this big. I just want you to be able to do this process. So they're not going to be huge numbers. Even, even these aren't really that big. It's not too bad. Now, once you have that common denominator, what's the next thing that you do? Okay. So we know that we could make one fraction of this and get 24 on the denominator. 56 plus 129. Can you do 56 plus 129? Yes. Sure. Yes. How much is it? 185. Okay. Can you change that back into a mixed number? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure you can. You divide it. You know what? If you have a calculator, your scientific calculator, what's very neat about your scientific calculator, if you plug that in as a fraction, mm -hmm. You put the 185, you press your fraction button, you put the 24, and you press equals. It's going to reduce that, or not reduce it, it will reduce it for you. It'll also change it into a mixed number for you. Without doing any math whatsoever, you press the equals button, bam, it'll give you the mixed number portion of that. That's kind of neat. It does it automatically for you. So if you don't have a scientific calculator, you need to go get one. That is uh, the requirement for this class, because starting in the next few sections, we're going to be using that almost exclusively. So starting on your fourth test material, you get to use a calculator for the rest of it. That's kind of nice. What is 185 over 24? Um, I'll show you after class. Okay, I'll, I'll bring one to class. Oh, actually, I'll show you next class. When you divide that 24 into 185, how much is that? How many times does 24 go into 185? What's the remainder? Um, seven, hey, do you remember how to do that? To change a improper fraction to a mixed number? Uh, divide. Like, you're down like I'm doing. Divide like I'm doing. We'd find out how many times 24 goes into 185. Maybe check 25. 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. Probably seven times. We put our 7 here, we multiply. I got 17. Did you get 17? Yeah. So our answer is 7 and 17 over 24. Now let me reiterate. Are there other ways to go about doing this? Yes. Definitely. You can actually find a common denominator here and add that fraction part and add the whole number part. However, when you get to some examples, your fraction part will be greater than 1. And you need to know what to do with that. Also, when you're subtracting, you will eventually have to borrow from a whole number. And people get really, really messed up with that. That's why we're doing it this way. If you like the other way of adding the whole number and the fraction part, great. You just have to be able to get the right answer every single time or I won't let you do it. Okay, including the carrying and the borrowing when you get to that section. Why don't you try one on your own real quick? Let's see if we can do it on our own, all right? Let's do 2 and a sixth 